I'd like to show you a couple of little transformation tricks in Illustrator and InDesign. I have this Apple logo here and I want to line up a whole row of them that are evenly spaced really quickly. All I need to do is take my move tool, the black arrow, the selection tool, drag the logo, hold option on the keyboard before, so you're, I'm still holding on to my mouse there. So I'm holding option, you can see that it duplicates the logo. And now I'm going to hold shift because if I don't, look, now I'm not holding shift, now I'm holding shift, it stays in a straight line. So now I let go with my mouse and it's duplicated it. Before I even deselect, all I need to do is, do, uh, is type Apple D on the keyboard. Again and again and again and again. And there you go. They're all exactly in a row, equally spaced. So this is pretty straightforward, uh, really useful to do. It just duplicates the last transformation you made. I want to show that to you in InDesign. See, I already have them there. I'm actually going to de delete a row of them. Select the apple. Do exactly the same thing. Option drag. Hold shift. Let go with the mouse. Now if I do Apple D, it doesn't do the same thing. I have to do, for some weird reason, Apple option and the number three. And there you go. It repeats them the same way in InDesign. All evenly spaced and the same size all in a row. We're going to go back to Illustrator and I'll show you something that's pretty cool. We're going to make a watch dial or all the needles that go around, not the needles, but the little tick marks that go around a speedometer or any kind of round dial. Anyways, you'll see what I mean in a sec. I have a stroke that I've set up here. I'm going to make it a bit fatter so that you can see it. And uh, I have some guides that I've already set up. So they're right in line with the stroke. All I need to do is select the rotate tool. You can just hit R on your keyboard and it'll select the rotate tool. And it, this is probably too small to see, but there's a little pivot that's right in the center of the stroke that I've drawn. Look, it pivots on itself by default. So we want this to be straight and I'm still holding, um, or no, I'm not holding anything. I still have my rotate tool active. So I'm gonna go and click down on in the intersection of my two guides. So that little pivot moved to the intersection of the guides and that means, look at this, it rotated around the center of the guides. So all I'm gonna do is click and drag the top of the stroke and then hold option and it's rotating around the center of the guides, the intersection of the guides, but I want it to snap to 45 degrees so I'm gonna also hold the shift key on the keyboard and then let go with my mouse. So you can see that it rotated 45 degrees. Now I'm not gonna deselect that last stroke that was created. I'm simply gonna type Apple D once, twice, three, four, all the way around. So you can see we have some nice um, strokes that are evenly spaced in a circle. Now I'm going to rotate these. So I'm gonna select them all, switch to the rotate tool, grab these and they're rotating them on themselves which is pretty cool but I'm gonna hold no I'm not even gonna rotate them like that I'm gonna take the rotate tool click on the center and just hit enter instead that's even easier and I'm gonna put in a value of 15 degrees and click on the copy button in the dialogue and look at that now we wanna make all of the lines that are at 45 degrees fatter and the other one's thinner. So I'm gonna decrease the stroke weight of these by pretty much, I'm gonna go right down to one point. So only my 45 degree lines are, are fatter and these are thinner. And now they're still selected, my thin lines. I'm gonna do Apple D again. And look at that nice dial. I'm gonna hide my guides here and look at the nice dial that I've set up. So I can use this as a clock face or a speedometer or any kind of dial like that. And uh, it's pretty slick.